So look, I like that all of us who decide to answer decide to go for B. Now, B is a proton pump inhibitor. I'm going to pour PPI. And therefore, as a proton pump inhibitor, it blocks the H plus, K plus, ATPase. Uh -huh. It's effectively, PPIs are going to be first line. But you're going to hate me. It's the wrong answer. It's the wrong answer because I wanted something that would act most rapidly. And how long does it take for a proton pump inhibitor to do its job? You know that? It takes three to five days to be fully effective. So what should you always start your patient who is symptomatic with? Because it might be second line, but it's going to work within 30 minutes. Naili, tell us. An H2 receptor blocker, you are totally correct. It's a classic trick. And when you're going to prepare for that, for, for that step one, make sure you know that story. Because step one and step two, we fall into the same trick thinking, Oh, the Prazol, they're the first line agent. That's the ones to go for if you want something that works right away because the patient is complaining of pain. Then, of course, an H2 receptor blocker would be the answer. And, and Naili, what would be your example of H2 blocker here? Which letter? A, C, D, E. I'll let you type. Famotidine, answer A. You are totally correct. Famotidine was the best answer. So I'm going to say second line. But works in 30 minutes. So the idea is to start the patient on both. Now, sodium bicarb. Why wasn't that a choice? Sodium bicarb is just there to neutralize acid but it has no effect on decreasing proton production. So it's literally just a base, as you know well, to neutralize the acid. But would it take care of the pain right away by neutralizing an antacid? You know, actually it would. That's why most of our patients, they'll first auto-medicate, they'll self-medicate with antacids that are found over the counter. However, very quickly, the pain will come back. It's just that it will just neutralize the acid. No? Now, answer D was an interesting choice. These are antibiotics with a compound, bismuth salicylate, and bismuth makes a coating to prevent further erosion of the ulcer crater. But when we try and answer D, it's because we're trying to treat what that is classically associated not only with recurrence of the peptic ulcer disease, but also with increased risk of developing adenocarcinomas, maltomas. So that's to eradicate over 14 days. H. pylori. Absolutely, Sharon, to eradicate H. pylori. Yeah? So 14 days treatment. Now, the alternative, which doesn't work any better, but works at least just as well. Uh, alternatively, I'm going to put ALT. You recall that we can use a proton pump inhibitor with a macrolide, the one that because of less motilin stimulation. Do you guys remember that macrolides stimulate motilin receptors? In other words, they increase peristalsis and they're even more likely to cause diarrhea and GI upset this way. Not only they mess up the, the uh, GI flora, 
but they have a direct effect on peristalsis. Clarithromycin has less GI effect. So I'll write here, less GI effect. And of course, with this to have synergy and decrease resistance, we also add amoxicillin. And here we go. Now, problem with omeprazole and clarithromycin. Uh, tell me for drug interactions. What do you know is true of both omeprazole and clarithromycin? Let's see, Agar. Uh, so that's true of omeprazole and agar, that's true of clarithromycin too. So both drugs are inhibitors of P450s. I'll make a question on this in one second. Okay, now let's see. There was one last answer here. And the one last answer was E, misoprostol. When you see prostol, prost, it makes you thinking of what? I'll put as a note here.